of years ago, we did an extreme makeover on my back patio here. I had been using it primarily as a workshop, but then I wanted to create a nice living space for my family to kind of extend the real estate of our home. It's covered, it's nice. We live in Florida and it's been working out really well. <laughs> <laughs> However, I still had to use out of necessity like a little corner of this patio to do my DIYs occasionally. I try to do it out on the grass, but sometimes the weather doesn't permit and I have to work underneath the patio. And so today it's looking for the most part really good, but there are some areas that need a little bit of cleanup and work. And while we're about sprucing it up, I thought we could do some outdoor DIYs, maybe use up some of the scrap lumber that I've got in my pile and just make it look really, really good through the help of Walmart, which I'll get into in a little bit. So let's just start out by assessing the situation, seeing what I have and we'll go from there, maybe build something and then do a really good cleanup and get it looking really, really good again. <laughs> it is what it is because my HOA won't let me build anything and we really love this area. So we're going to make it work. <laughs> okay. So this side doesn't look too terrible. I mean, obviously it's a little bit dirty. It's when we start getting over here and to this side where I kind of been using at my workshop. And as you can see here, I just finished a project, so that's why this looks particularly bad. It usually doesn't look quite this bad. And then walking around over here, I also want to clean out this. <laughs> I don't even know what happened here. So we're going to get this all cleaned up and organized. Just cleaning alone really elevates the space. When you have a clean environment, you just feel better. It makes it feel a lot more elevated. So now would be a really good time for us to take a little break from the heat, humidity. <laughs> Even though I'm outside, I'm sitting directly under a fan, so it's nice and cooling off here. But I wanted to tell you about some of the items I got because the next thing we're gonna do is build a huge storage container that we're gonna put next to my lounge chairs over here. And this container was really important to me because I needed some storage space since I'm kind of unfortunately combining two things out here, my summer oasis <laughs> and my workshop just out of necessity. Hey, it's real life. Not everybody gets a nice workshop including somebody who does this for a living. <laughs> it's just the reality of life. So I needed to come up with a storage solution. So I ordered this ginormous 150 gallon storage container. I ordered it on walmart.com and it was the best price I could find. It was awesome. It's huge. And there's like two little sections in it. So one section I'm going to be using to store some of my small hand tools, but still keep them protected. And then the other section, I'm going to be storing a lot of my smaller scrap pieces because those pieces of wood cost money and they are valuable to me, <laughs> even though my husband says, get rid of them. But I found that as I have gotten more and more busy, it's just life is busy. I have found myself shopping online more and more and Walmart has really upped their game. I'm really impressed with the quality of items. They've always had affordable prices and the quality is just getting better and better. And I love the items that I have selected. So this item's more functional, but I also ordered a lot of beautiful things to kind of elevate the space even more from some cafe lighting to some topiaries that we're going to do a little DIY with here in a minute to some table decor and grill stuff. So I can really create a summer oasis out here, even though I do have a little section that is dedicated to a workshop. So we're going to try to downplay the workshop part and up the outdoor living space, if you will. And I'm just so grateful that I had the ability to do that with affordable prices. And I'm so excited. So let's get building this storage container. I think it will be pretty easy to put together if you just follow the instructions, right? Ladies, we know to follow the instructions. <laughs> it will make it really easy. And then I will continue the cleaning process and get this place looking amazing. <laughs> it so deserves it.
things I wanted to point out, right in each one of these sections, there is like a little drain. So if for some reason this did take on water, you could drain it out from the bottom. But this should be pretty watertight. I love it because it kind of matches the plant stands that I built a few years ago. And then you don't have to use this to store tools. Like this would be great for storing cushions and pillows and outdoor pool equipment. So super, super handy to have around. It's really good quality, I love it. Now let's load it up. <laughs> Okay, so I've got some tools on this side. I have a few more that will go in there, but on this side, we're gonna now put any usable scrap that I think of value. Problem is, is I think everything has value, so that's gonna be difficult. So I'm gonna try to get rid of the really tiny stuff and focus more on things that I can actually probably make something out of, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna kind of sort this as we go. What I think I can use and what I'm not gonna use. Okay, now I've got to venture into snake territory right here. I'm a little scared, but we're gonna address it. And I think once we get rid of the mess, there will be less places to hide, hopefully. I don't know. We're gonna take care of it now. Wish me luck that I don't discover a snake. Hopefully he's already gone and I don't need to see him ever again. <laughs> and shop backing it all up. It looks so much better. I feel like it can go outside and hang out in this outdoor oasis. It's amazing. I am so excited. Okay, before we get everything all cleaned up fully and all the tools put away, I thought we could do a couple of DIYs. The first of which is I had this kind of aqua colored cart in my craft room already and I thought it would be fun to kind of convert it into a very simple grill cart or bar cart. I found some scrap wood in our cleanup that we're gonna use and then everything that I have here has been in my stash so I have these handles that are in my stash and some hooks, they're not matching. So we'll probably spray paint the handles black since we've got a lot of black in our design out here. And so we are gonna do that now, just a couple of cuts, a couple of nails, some glue and a little stain. And hopefully we will have a little topper that can set on top of this cart. And then we can use that as a grill cart. So let's build this very quickly. <laughs> so we are gonna measure the length here and that is 17 inches and then we already know that it's just about right on the depth. And so I'm, then I'm gonna decide whether I want to put some braces on the inside or if I want to wrap it. I'm leaning towards wrapping it to give us a little bit more space to do some hooks. We're gonna go make those cuts now. So we made some simple miter cuts all the way around. And used a little wood glue and some finish nails and nailed that into place and let that dry.
then I went ahead and took some wood filler that I made myself, filled in any nail holes and cracks that were needed and let that dry. Then I took a sander to it, sanded it all down as best I could. And then I had this like gray sponge little staining kit that I picked up somewhere. I got it on and it was a light gray color, which is kind of a nice beachy tone. It kind of has a butcher block feel to it. And then we let that dry. Now, if we're gonna be leaving it out, I'm going to probably need to go back and use a, a water sealer on it, but I think it will be under the covered patio area. So it's probably okay. And it needs a little time to set up before I do some kind of sealer coat. And then I spray painted the handles a matte black because we've got a lot of black out here for one but for two we wanted it to match our little hooks that we were putting on it and so then we screwed that into place and we also put on all the hooks now I eyeballed all of this and it turned out fine but if you're meticulous you may want to break out your measuring tape and do it that way it works out great for me I think it looks fine but that might bother some people and I got a new um, grilling set because mine was really tattered looking old on Walmart and I just went ahead and hooked those onto our hooks and then I put a towel over one of the handles on the sides and this little cart is going to be really fun to have around in this summer season and year-round because I live in Florida but I just thought this this is all stuff that I had either in my crazy wood stash or you know up in my craft room and it worked out so so cute so just think outside of the box reimagine some things and you can come up with a new purpose for this i love this car it's so super cute and i hope you liked it okay so i got my outdoor sofa set from walmart a couple years ago i love it it's beautiful and holding up really really well it's a little dirty and so are the chaise lounges over by the pool here so we are going to get out our pressure washer pressure wash everything down get it looking good and then we're going to do some pots and we might replace some of the tired looking pillows and freshen it up, get it looking really good out here. give you an idea of the power of a pressure washer this is before and that is after that is so disgusting but we're gonna be having it look brand new They're still drying, but these look almost as good as the day that I bought them. So I feel really good about that. And these two. So as you can see, we need to put a new top on that. I'm actually gonna take the little wood round that was on that, put it on this. The original one kind of fell apart because I never put a water sealer on it. So I'm gonna put a water sealer on this one and hopefully it will last a little bit better. You and I have worked really hard, have we not? <laughs> so we're pretty much clean. I do need to pressure wash our whole entire pool deck, but our hose is not long enough. So it just had to do with a good sweep and a chop back. Now we're to the pretty stuff. And I really think adding um, plants and all that is really good. And I cannot keep anything alive <laughs> if it's in a pot. I've tried, I get busy. I either overwater, underwater it. You know what? 
faux plants are now coming in to where they're not so taboo. <laughs> in fact, I know some very big name designers that will do faux plants even outside. The new stuff looks so realistic. And so I'm not gonna feel too guilty about it. I'll probably get harassed a little bit about it, but all the power to you who out there who can make anything grow. <laughs> I can if it's in the ground, mostly, uh, but if it's in a pot, it's a guaranteed death sentence and I don't wanna do that. I'm tired of feeling guilty about that. So I got these beautiful pots on Walmart and then also these uh, box with topiaries that we're gonna be making a couple of these to put around the pool area. I haven't decided whether we're gonna put them at the back on either side of the pool or if in the front area, I'm gonna kind of play around with it and see what looks good. And it turns out this styrofoam is gonna come in handy because I'm gonna put it in here and to, to lift it up. I don't want it to weigh a thousand pounds. We want it to be level. I'll show you what we're putting in. Okay, so I think this will be the last one. That looks pretty level. And then I might go find some rocks to give it a little bit of weight because we don't want it too lightweight, but we do not want it to weigh a thousand pounds either. And then what I was thinking is We'll put this topiary there and hopefully that's about the right height. And then I am just gonna take all of these silks are UV resistant. We'll just make sure that's in the center. And these look pretty legit. And then I think these ones look really cool hanging over the edge. So we're gonna put a few of these in. How's that looking? Here's how bad it is. I can't even keep like ferns alive. So <laughs> these ones are faux too. Shh. I know people are gonna say it's tacky, but I'm excited about it. Yes, they're faux. They've really, really improved that. I think that there's just something really nice about live plants. And if you can do that, do live. Like I'm all for that. That's really the way to go. But if you're like me, it's okay. There's like some big name designers now that, that are doing the faux stuff outside. It looks really, really good. And it just does elevate the space. Many of you who have been watching me for a while know about my little outdoor fire bowl that I did a few years ago. I love it. I still love it. It's so pretty. Adding a fire element in your outdoor space really will elevate it, make it a good like conversation. There's something about like fire that is just really good for the soul, like sitting around a campfire. But if you don't want to go to the extent of doing an actual campfire and our home in Maine, we actually do have a fire pit. It's so much fun. You can roast marshmallows and all of that. But just having some kind of fire element is just a really nice element that you can add to your patio space. Another idea you can elevate your outdoor space is by adding extra lighting. And I really love solar powered lighting. And I bought these ones. These are solar powered cafe lights. And I really wanted to run them across my pool cage. I just couldn't make it happen myself. And I need to hire a professional to come do it just because I don't want to do it over the pool. So I'm going to hire that out, but I'm really excited about the ones that I got. I love that it's solar powered, so I don't have to have a power bill for that. And then a couple years ago, I bought some other cafe style lights that I hung, of course, over the little boxwood wall that I did a couple years ago when we initially did the makeover. And then I put in these little firefly lights. I'm not exactly sure if that's what they're called. They kind of twinkle at night, and I think it kind of gives like the effect of fireflies, especially if there's a little bit of a breeze and it blows. It's so cute. They kind of like blink and everything. So much fun. And then my umbrella, of course, has the solar powered lights on the underside of it. And then I got the candle that looks like a high end designer brand. So anywhere you can add some additional lighting, it adds ambiance. It's just a really nice touch. And I love that idea. And then finally, it is all the just little finishing touches from the pillows to the, all of the accents. I got almost everything, including my outdoor living room set 
from Walmart. I've had that for a couple of years. It's held up great, I love it. And I will link everything that I got there below. So I just wanna thank Walmart once again for sponsoring this episode. I'm thrilled with the end result of the patio makeover. It's sometimes a work, but I had a mess on my hand because I was using it as a workshop and I kind of let it go a little bit too long. Just stay on top of it and, and you won't have to go to the amount of work that I did, but I hope these ideas inspired you to elevate your patio areas. It is so beautiful this evening. I am so enjoying it. Wish you were here and so does Dolly. Do you wish they were here? Do you wish? Yes? I'm just chilling. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And to all of my DIY goddesses out there, you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.